Welcome back to Chicks in the Sticks. Yes, we have another fabulous episode for y'all. Don't we, Chelsea? What are we going to talk about? I think we're going to talk about anxiety and depression because guess what, guys? I've got both. Same. <laughs> 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 yeah. Sad Girls Club. Welcome. Sad Girls Club in the hot tub. It's, it's okay because you know what? Everyone goes through this and we just want to talk about it because it's actually very normal and common. This is Chicks in the Sticks. This podcast navigates uncharted territories, some of which may include sensitive and complex subjects. While we strive to foster understanding, awareness, and empathy, the discussions may inadvertently touch on topics or opinions that could be distressing or triggering for some. Viewer discretion is always advised. Now let's get back to the podcast. Before we begin today's episode, we want to acknowledge the sensitive nature of the topics we're discussing. The episode includes conversations about trauma, sexual assault, and suicide. These subjects can be incredibly difficult and may trigger painful memories or emotions for some listeners. If you find these topics too distressing, please consider skipping this episode or listening with a trusted friend or family member. Remember, it's okay to pause, skip, or stop the episode at any time. Take care of yourself and do what's best for you. Absolutely. Yep. All right, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's start with a quote, guys. Anxiety comes from overthinking the future, and depression comes from overthinking the past. Wow. wow. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's so true. That yeah. is really true. Yep. That is really true. So, basically, you just think about the now. Yeah. Which it's- also will probably make you depressed, but... <laughs> <laughs> Mental health is important. Yeah. It really I've, is. It's probably the most important. You, you, you literally can't do anything... Yes. ...if you're not mentally... Stable. I mean, no, seriously, though, like you can be so crippled from anxiety or depression that you yeah. cannot go out. You cannot use the bathroom. You can't put on a shirt. You can't go and shower. And it doesn't matter what you have in life either. No, you can have like so much and you can be so wealthy. And, and you, you can, can be surrounded. So- <laughs> I got can- my little energy drink here. <laughs> Now the hot tub's energized. I know, right? But I also feel like I might have gotten a lot hot tub water in here. Mm-hmm. But maybe. I'm still going to drink it. Uh, you can have so many people surrounding you, too, yeah. and just feel so alone. alone. Right. Yep. I thought about that in New York City, where when I lived there for nine years. I thought about how there are like so many people in the city, but how so alone you can still feel. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And that's, that a crazy, yeah. that's a crazy fucking feeling. It doesn't There's matter. There's so m- many people out here. And yet, I'm walking and I'm feeling so alone right now. Like, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Surrounded by people. Even, like, famous people. Like, so many songs that you hear people write. They're like, I have all these millions of people that love me, but I'm still so alone. Right. Or, like, you know, artists, rock stars, whatever, who, like, commit suicide. They have so much talent and so much to give. And you're like, why would they just throw that out of the way? And it's because it's hard for certain people to understand how hard depression hits you. Yep. And there's different forms of depression. And, right? and yeah. And uh, I think someone committed suicide recently. It was an OnlyFans girl. Okay, yeah. She was, like, really... Or not even OnlyFans, I think. She was a straight-up, like, adult actress, like, mm-hmm. a really big one. Yeah. And she committed suicide, like, a day ago, two days ago. It's it's so sad, and it's, it's common, you know, unfortunately. And I think we should, like I said, let's talk about it, um... And, you know, we can go through our own stories. So what was like the very first memory you have of having anxiety or being anxious? Do hmm. you remember? Because when they said that, I started thinking about my, like what my more earliest memory is for that. Genuinely feel like I've been anxious almost whole my whole life without realizing what it was. Yeah. Like I have vivid memories of just like growing up and always being anxious of what other people thought of me or what I'm gonna, if I'm wearing something appropriate, especially growing up like in the Jehovah's Witness cult that I grew up in. Right. You're constantly being looked at for how you act, what you say, what you wear, who you are. So that just heightens the anxiety level right there. Yep. Absolutely. Because you're like very focused in on, especially if you know you're so different yeah. and you know that you're not happy right, being right. who you are in like in yeah, something Chelsea, like that, I you know, I can't fucking imagine that Chelsea. I'm like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> one of my first memories of, and it might be actually my first memory of anxiety. It's crazy. I was so young. I can't believe I remember this. Cause sometimes I would think that 
I had dreamt this or something, but I would ask my mom and she'd be like, no, it happened. I was in like first preschool. I might've been in preschool and the teacher passed out and just fell over, just fell right over. And I remember looking around and it was just all of us kids and someone like kind of like poked her and was like, Mrs. So-and-so. Oh. And it was like really scary because an adult just fucking passed out in front of us yeah. as young children. And we didn't know what to do. Thank God she was okay. And and mm. I think, I guess one of the other students just went to another classroom and got a teacher. But oh my gosh, that was so, I just remember being so scared. And yeah. I think that's like, that was a real anxiety moment of like, oh my God, what? This can happen to an adult? Do you think the feeling of being scared is very similar to the feeling of being anxious? Mm -hmm. Like, how would you, Actually, how would like you that. decipher the, like the two? That's actually a very good question because I do think anxiety and fear are hand in hand a lot of times. It's hard. Fear, now I have to really think about that. Yeah. Do you know how you would separate it? <laughs> I, I don't. That's why I'm asking you. Yeah. <laughs> the thing about anxiety too, though, is that you don't know when it's going to hit. You can... Fear yeah. can induce anxiety, but also anxiety can come from nowhere. Yeah. Oh, and absolutely. And that's like the freakiest part it's for me. It's the worst. It's the worst because you could just be going through your day. A great and, day. Yeah. A great day. Nothing's going yep. wrong and it can change like that. Mm -hmm. Like it's crazy. Yep. That happens to me all the time. And I'm like, why am I so anxious right now? Like, right. why do I have anxiety? I have right. no, and then I start thinking about like everything that happened that maybe led up to it. And I'm like, nothing right, because, happened. Be, oh, interesting. Cause like a lot of times I have to go back and, and think, okay, well maybe this thing that's going on in my life, I think I'm handling it well, but what if I'm deep down inside? I'm not. And there's hmm. part of me that flares up and is like freaking out a little bit. I truly think it's my subconscious. Hmm. And it's interesting because it's crazy how unrational it is when you have anxiety because you think you're going to die. Yeah. It's the weirdest thing. You, yeah. you just think like I'm dying right now. And then when you have depression, you're like, God, I hope I die right now. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Do you think you have more anxiety or do you think you have more depression? I would probably say anxiety at this point in my life. I went through a really bad depression at the end of college. I was really stressed out. Tell me about it. I'll tell you about it. Well, I think I just... <laughs> It hit me that I didn't really know what was happening after college. Mm, like yeah. I hadn't set up my next plan. Yeah. And since I was young, I've always had structure. I had high school. You go to middle school, high school, there's structure. You go to college, there's structure. After college, there's no structure. You form your own structure. So true. And I don't know if it was because I'm the youngest in my family. And in a way, I felt like everything was done for me. Yeah. At the end of college, I, I fell into a really deep depression. And I had to go home for a little while. And I just remember feeling like I would never, ever want this feeling for my worst enemy. Yeah. Never. The feeling of just, it was like all the emotions, all the happiness was drained from me. And usually I'm pretty good at like pepping myself up and making myself feel better. But anything I did, I couldn't. Yep. And it was just, I felt so empty. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to die, but I didn't want to live. Mm. Because yep. I was like, and, yeah. this, you know what I mean? It yep. was like, this feeling is so sad. I, I can't be happy again. Why am I alive? That's scary. Mm -hmm. And it scared the shit out of me. And I got better. And I got on medication. And I still take medication today. It has helped me so much. <laughs> it, See, I just recently got medicated for really? anxiety yeah okay so i'm still I'm, I'm new to the medication game interesting so for me what i this it was hard because for me and and they say this a lot about antidepressants it really kind of weakens your libido mm. and your sexuality mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that was hard for me because i liked my sexuality i like feeling sexy and beautiful and it was something that excited me, and I really liked it. But the feeling that I had of being so sad, I was like, I would give it up to be happy again. Yeah. That's oh, how yeah. bad yep. it was. Yep. That's so sad. It is. Yeah. Oh, it's terrible. Yep. And I had to work through it a lot because, you know, if I was with, like, a boyfriend or something, you know, it was harder for me to get off. Mm -hmm. And I got frustrated. In a way, it made me feel, like, less of a woman because mm -hmm. I couldn't get 
get there. Mm-hmm. I think that's how I've been feeling lately with my medication. Yeah. So I have been on it for a few months now. And I've felt like I just haven't had that sex drive either. I'm, I've been off of it now for about three weeks because I ran out and I'm waiting yeah. for the new one to come in, which is how I noticed the change. The change, yeah. The your libido. It was libido and it was appetite. I just was not eating. I was yeah. not hungry. I just didn't want to eat. Yeah. I was that. tiny. I got so skinny. Yeah. And now I'm eating again and everything, and it feels so much better. Now I'm debating on whether I want to go back on the medication. Right. I don't it's, know. Yeah, and that's it's sad that you have to kind of give up that. Yeah. I'm at, I feel like I'm at a place in my life where I finally feel it again. My body's gotten used to the medicine. I, I don't know. I've, I've found happiness other places. And also I'm just older and... and I don't know. I've heard as you get older, you're like for women, your sexuality increases, especially in your like late thirties and forties that you just get like super horned up all the time. Oh, I'm excited. So I'm like, I hope that's what's happening. <laughs> I'm hoping I'm riding that Ho- wave. Hopefully. <laughs> and I don't riding want the that wave. boner wave. Dude. And I don't want it to crash. <laughs> it's hard. Depression is hard. I had this teacher in high school who was so adamant that suicide was selfish and, mm, and she was very intense hard. about it. Because, like, in high school, like, that was way before I had my depression. So I was influenced by other people's opinions. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, maybe it is. But going through it, this lady has no idea how low yep. you can mm-hmm. feel and not want to be alive. Oh, you, yeah. you don't even, it doesn't even, you don't even think about the people around you because you're so fucking depressed. Yeah, not even in the slightest. I've tried to kill myself. Have you? Yeah. Yeah. Did you do it when you were in your cult still? Um, yeah, I was uh, in high school. Do you want to tell me about it? Um, I, just, I went through a very uh, depressive stage after I got raped uh, by the three guys yeah. when I was a freshman in high school. And I never told anyone about that um, back then. So it was just something I was dealing with all myself. I was going to school every day, and they were there, and they would you know, do little things to, like, torment me at school, and, um... It's just like, oh my god, Chelsea. So I dealt with that all freshman year, and that was, like, the worst year, really, of my life, and I just, I tried to kill myself a few times and when I was about, what, 15? You are about 15 or 16 yeah. in freshman high school? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, I was still in the Jehovah's Witness cult. Obviously, like, if you, if you talk about anxiety or depression within a cult, they're gonna tell you to pray. Yeah. They're, they're not helpful. They're like, pray the sadness away. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and oh, you're like, it doesn't work like that. God will help you. Lean on God. He'll give you everything you need. Yeah. And I was not about to hear all that bullshit. So I didn't, I didn't talk to a single person about any, anything, any of it, ever, um, until I got married to my ex-husband. Oh, my gosh. So, you, so how many years did, did you keep that in? Uh, let's see. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, oh, like five years. Oh my God, Chelsea. Yeah, and even then I told my ex-husband because he was also in the Jehovah's Witness cult and it was kind of an awkward conversation because you don't hear of anyone getting raped or anything bad happening to people in the Jehovah's Witness cult because they keep it so low-key if any of that stuff happens. Right. So because I had never known anyone else who had been through it, I told my ex I just got like molested and touched. So my ex still didn't even know the full, the full like, story. Yeah. So Until my current husband. <laughs> the guys that raped you, were they in the cult? No, they were at school. It was at school that it happened. Do you still know those people? Mm-hmm. Yep, I know all three of them. Do you still like stay in touch with them on social media? No. I've since like looked at where their life has gone yeah. and what they're up to. Do you think they fully uh, understood what they did to you? I don't know. I don't know. That's just so messed up. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's fucked up, but whatever happened, happened, you know? What are you going to do? It's it is just, what it is. <laughs> it's just amazing, like, what the human spirit can go through. Yeah. And how, like, resilient women can be. hmm It's crazy now to meet so many people who have also either thought about committing suicide or have tried. Right. So many people. And it's crazy to not feel as alone as I did 
in a cult where it's supposed to be more of like a family, yeah. but I feel less alone yeah. outside of it. That is crazy. So oh, let's like actually define what anxiety and depression is. Like a, an official definition. So let's start with the definition of anxiety. You ready for this, Chelsea? I am ready. Anxiety disorders involve persistent and excessive worry or fear that can interfere with daily life. Key features of anxiety disorders include excessive worry, physical symptoms, and avoidance. Those are the three. Yeah. I've yeah. experienced those. I feel like excessive worry is for sure just like that that's like anxiety yeah that, that just is anxiety it is I yeah. feel like I'm always worrying about everything like if I sit down at my house like if I sit on the couch I am constantly thinking about everything that I could be doing yeah like I can never just let myself just sit really I am constantly anxious I constantly have that anxiety about I could be doing the dishes, I could be sweeping, I could be vacuuming, I could be cleaning this, I could be doing this, I could be doing laundry. Okay, so I I think about those things too and they stress me out and I'll be like sitting on the couch and it'll become too overwhelming that I don't want to do it and then I feel like mm. sad and depressed. Like even though okay. I have re- recovered, I would say I've recovered from my depression, I still, I still get depressed. Like there's still things that I feel like I just can't get done. But also, that's being a human. I mean, that's human yeah, nature. It's very true. It's, yeah. n- no one's perfect. No one can get all their shit done at the time they want it to be done perfectly. Yeah, but you're more hard on yourself. Like, you I think am. you can, though, you know? At yeah. least I do. I'm like, I could get it all done. I should be getting it all I done. I know. I yeah. am, it's yeah. It's awful. It, it is. It is awful. I shouldn't be, like, so hard on myself. But. See, I can't sit there and then get overwhelmed and then get depressed. Like, I don't do that. I sit there in constant anxiety until it's too much where I have to get up. Right. I can't sit and relax and just be on my phone because it's just a constant, like, I'm constantly, like, right. anxious about everything oh, I have so to do. interesting. Well, okay, so, question. When you had kids, did you have more anxiety since I've had kids I feel like I do yeah I have more to be anxious about right right especially like for them and for their well-being and now I have a whole family that I have to just like be strong for and just like worry about everything yeah and now I'm just worried about everything but also I feel like in a weird way I'm handling my anxiety better because I have children also though Mm mm-hmm because I grew up with, like, watching my mom be super depressed and anxious all the time. And that's a lot of the traits I don't want my kids to see in me. So I try to not bring it out as much. So it's, oh, I know it helped me, but it also kind of made it worse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can see that happening because I feel like I would be so stressed out about kids yeah. if I had them. Like, it would add so much more anxiety in my life. Okay. Let's go through the rest of these symptoms. Anxiety can manifest in physical symptoms such as rapid heartbeat, sweating, trembling, difficulty breathing, stomach upset, and dizziness. Upset, difficulty, stomach, diarrhea, a Pepto Bismol. <laughs> <laughs> Difficulty breathing, upset stomach, and dizziness. Individuals with anxiety disorders may avoid certain situations or activities that trigger the anxiety, leading to social or occupational impairment. Yeah, yeah. I remember being like, I try to get myself to go to, so I went to art school, and I tried to get myself to go to my friend's gallery opening, and I did, and I remember it was Sonia, I remember her name, and I remember she just came up and smiled at me, and I just wanted to cry. Because I was just so sad. Mm. And I, I needed someone. I needed someone to talk to. And yeah. I needed professional help. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's so hard getting out there into a social event. Yeah. When you just feel like shit. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, definitely is. You know, I'm happy we're going over the actual symptoms for each individual, like anxiety and depression. Right. Because I feel like... They're so, like, they feel so similar. They do. That it's so hard to actually distinguish which one you have. Like, I feel for me, I, 
I have anxiety, and then the depression follows the anxiety. I feel like that's usually how, yeah. I, think I feel that's like that's usually how it is. For a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. Um, so depression. Let's go into uh, that. Yeah. Okay, so. Depression is a mood disorder characterized by persistent feelings of sadness, hopelessness, and loss of interest in pleasure in activities that were in- once enjoyable. Depression can significantly impair a person's ability to function in daily life and can affect thoughts Feelings and behaviors. Ooh, depression. Mm-hmm. That's so true that it can seriously impair a person's ability to function, like daily, yeah. day to day. Yeah, that's so true. It, it is. It's crazy, and and like I just wish people. I think it's so hard for people who've never gone through it to fully understand and grasp it. Everything is hard. It Everything. Is. <laughs> No matter like what it what Dude, seems just like, fucking it's rolling not. over in your bed is hard. Yep, get just yep breathing, man. I swear. Oh God, yeah. So some of the key features of depression are persistent sadness, loss of interest or pleasure, changes in appetite or weight, sleep dis- disturbances, fatigue or loss of energy, difficulty concentrating or making decisions, feeling worthlessness, thoughts of death or suicide. Yep. yep. Check, check, check. <laughs> I fell over more than once. So obviously, persistent sadness is sadness <laughs> that doesn't go yeah, away. It's yeah. very persistent. Right. You're always gonna feel sad, and it sucks because, like, a lot of times, if I feel sad, like the next morning, it's like, okay, it's a new morning, it's a new day. I got this. See, but then did you really deal but, with it if you just went to bed? Well, no. Okay. What I'm saying is like, you know, you're, you know, you're depressed if you wake up the next morning and you're still fucking depressed. Like if like you're mm. so sad, cause a lot of times the night in a way kind of heals you while you sleep and you feel a lot better in the morning. The sun is shining. You got the vitamin D, like the, the flowers are blooming. Everything's great. Mm-hmm. That happened when I, when I was depressed, that, mm. ha- that those things were going on. Be- life was beautiful, but yeah. I would still wake up. Yep. And I would have like a little voice in my head telling me like to die and kill myself. Yep. And I almost felt like I was battling with someone in my head. Yep. And it, my depression came because I didn't want to do that. And then all of a sudden mm. this thought was becoming like very intrusive. And so I dealt with a lot of intrusive thoughts that I felt like I couldn't control. Huh. And it scared the shit out of me. Yeah. Because I knew I wasn't that person. Yeah. It was almost like I felt like a demon was inside of me. See, at night was always the worst time for me okay. for depression. Yeah. I would stay up all night and just like burn myself. Like, really? Yeah. So like I didn't want to cut myself because too many people were doing that. Yeah. So I used to just like light matches and just put them out on my like I would go through a whole like 72 Pete, like thing box of matches and burn yourself and just like light them all, let them burn. And then just like put them out on my like legs or my arms. Oh, that's so interesting because that's what Zendaya does in euphoria. Oh, that's interesting. I've never seen that show. Okay. Yeah. She burns herself as, huh. as like, um, like, like it's like cutting your, you know, she burns herself. Yeah. But I didn't know that was a thing that people did. Like I, I cause I, I mean, I would, I had cut myself. Okay. Back in yeah, the day. yeah. But burning, I just, I, I didn't know yeah. that was a thing yeah. until I watched that. So that's so interesting because now I've met someone who actually did that. Yeah, I used to burn. I used to work at a restaurant too, so it was easy to like walk by the oven and accidentally like hit it with my arm or something. You know, I'd get like a bunch of burns from the oven at like the restaurants and stuff. Did you get it because you felt like you deserved it? <sighs> Maybe. I don't know. Like, did did you induce pain to yourself because you felt like you deserved it? I think I induced pain on myself because I felt like it was the only way I could genuinely feel. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like part of me, I did it as a punishment to myself. Definitely a part. I'm so hard on myself that, which is sad, Mm -hmm. but. Very. Yep. I mean. I'm a complicated person. What can I say? You're human. What do you want? You're having a hot tub. Complicated person. And here we are. And here we are. Uh, So loss of interest or pleasure. So obviously losing interest in activities that were once enjoyable, including hobbies, socializing, or work-related activities. Yeah, that definitely is something that hits hard. Yep. And especially if you're a very social person. I feel like I'm pretty social. I like meeting people and, and going Same. out and yep. going on a bit, right? You too, adventures yep. and whatnot. Yep. So it is like pretty deteriorating to have it take you back Just from that. To set you back of that. Yeah. Strip of it. Yeah. Like that's so hard what you are. And I can't even imagine you just like stripped of that. 
Yeah. Just like nothing. It's not you. Just like an empty shell. Yeah. Just floating around. Like, it, so loss of interest, of including hobbies, that was huge for me. Really? I felt like I just was not doing anything I once loved. Yeah. Anything that I considered to be like my therapy. Right. That got me like through the day and like got me pumped for the day and got me excited to be alive. Yeah. I just had no interest or, or pleasure in doing it anymore at all. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. So the things that once made you happy just didn't make you happy anymore. Would you say that? I, yeah. I just had no interest in doing them. Maybe yeah. it because I knew they would make me happy. Right. And maybe I felt like I didn't actually want to be happy, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. or I felt like I didn't deserve to be. Who knows? Right. But, you know, I haven't worked through all that yet. I was in therapy for a while, but I, gradu- I graduated therapy recently. Oh, right. We have a, gra- <laughs> a therapy graduate, ladies graduate. and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Thank you. She Thank graduated. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so how'd that go? Was that, do you feel accomplished? Like, do you feel like you got something out of it? Oh, trillion percent. Yeah. Good. Absolutely. Going into it, did you think you would get anything out of it? Were you skeptical? No. So I, I did not. I started therapy for the very first time when I was pregnant with my daughter. Okay. So the first time I was pregnant. What year was that? 2019. Okay. Um, I think I went to therapy like 2018 though, um, because... Right. I had her in April of 2019. Yeah. So I was in therapy like my, the whole time I was pregnant with her. I got severe depression while pregnant, which I did not know was a thing. I knew like, you know, postpartum, right. after you have the baby, people get depressed. But not during. I did not know during you can get depressed. I didn't know that either. I saw all these other women who were pregnant with me. Yeah. Who were just, you know, glowing and just having like the best pregnancies. And I just was so depressed. Both of my pregnancies. I went to therapy for both, like both times I was pregnant. Damn. See, that's so interesting because I've, I think I want a child. Like I think I I would like to have a family, but also I'm nervous about the medications I take affecting the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And I've talked to my GYN and she says, our priority is the mother's health. Yeah. Take the medicine, because a lot of times the babies just turn out fine. Yeah. You know, there is a risk, but the mother's health is most important, which is very interesting to me. I mean, if you think about, like, two generations ago, they were doing drugs, they were that drinking. That is so true. And all, all of those, all of our parents came out, like, you know, but came out okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For the most part. At least they're, they're healthy. Right. You know, maybe yeah, not. like Woodstock, no. like the people were doing drugs, getting pregnant, having love babies right? and children everywhere. So and why those is it, were fine. why is it so like, so many rules, you can't do this when you're pregnant. Yeah, Even yeah. now it's like, oh yeah, you can have coffee while you're pregnant. Like that's what I'm too. And I'm like, where was that when I was pregnant? I, yeah. I was off of like ever. I was not doing and anything. You, and you can smoke now too while you're pregnant. Yeah. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine. Oh we'll do it. You won't. <laughs> but seriously, it's like the so you were doing. People were doing so much while they were pregnant. Yeah. It's crazy. It, it, it is. It really is. I feel and like your medication probably wouldn't mess with me too much. And I think about. Did you ever watch that show on TLC that was I called? I didn't know I was pregnant. Yes. Uh, okay. So there's women on there who like. They're like, I was drinking and I was smoking and then this baby popped out. And like the baby is healthy and so fine. Healthy, yep. And I'm like, what how? Like, can you imagine just happen? living your life like you are right now for nine months not knowing you're pregnant? Living your exact life, exactly everything you do for nine months not knowing See, you're that pregnant. That just blows my mind. And the baby comes out fine. So why are we so stressed every time? Seriously. We're pregnant? I don't I, get yeah, it. I don't know. I don't know. I just yeah. So yeah, the first time I ever went to therapy was when I was pregnant. And then I went back again when I was pregnant with my son. Both of those times was uh, when I was in the Marine Corps. So I went to a therapist on base. Okay. So I felt like it wasn't that beneficial for me because she was in uniform. I was in uniform. And that felt like there was a boundary. Very formal. Of things I could talk about, feelings yeah. I could actually express. Oh, that's so interesting that you both were in uniform. Yeah. Like very formal and... Yeah, because she, she worked on base. Like she was, that was her job in the military was to do that. I can see how that would be hard to open up to. Yeah. So now I've actually, you know, the therapy I just started right. recently that I just graduated from, I'm out. It was through the VA, so still like veteran, but it was more of like a, a trauma therapy. Mm-hmm. And 
it was all Zoom calls all the time, usually. Mm-hmm. And it was just so much more e- I felt like I could swear. I felt like I yeah. could be myself, you know? Yeah. It was just way better. That's like the best when you find a therapist who you just click with that you can honestly be yourself around because you're paying them to help you. Yeah. And if you can't totally relax and be yourself around them, then you're just like wasting your money and they're not getting in. So it's, it's hard, you know, and I think a lot of people will go to therapy once, mm-hmm. try it and not like it because they just aren't a right match with the therapist. Oh, absolutely. You have and, to find... and you really do have to, it's almost like you, an interview process. You have to go around yep. and figure out who you drive with the best. I tell that to so many people. I'm like, if you're going to start therapy, don't be afraid to realize that that therapist isn't the right one for you. Yeah, and, and you're not going to hurt their feelings. Like They get it. Mm-hmm. They know like p- different people click with different therapists. And also, if they're like a truly kind therapist, they're going to want you to get the help that you need. And so they're going to say, go for it. Find a different person. I hope you well, or I wish you well. You yeah, know? yeah. And that's why I feel so blessed to have found the one that I just like found and just graduated therapy from. So do you, do you think doing like the over the camera therapy is just as good as in person therapy? I think so. Yeah, absolutely. I think I have to be in person to get the Mm. best benefit out of it. Something about the screen just takes me out of it. Hmm. And, and like I, I can still talk and be honest and tell my feelings, but I just don't feel like the connection is there. See, I, felt like it was better because if I'm talking to someone about my feelings or about what I have going on, I'm going to be playing with like my, my pants. I'm going to be playing with something. I need to be like fidgety, fidgety. So I could just put my camera up here and be fidget and she wouldn't see me. Okay. So I felt like it was less vulnerable for me in a way even though I was expressing my genuine feelings and it was like incredibly helpful I was also able to like do things that I didn't really want her to like judge me on or be like, Oh, why are you fidgeting? Like, like, yeah. Like focus <laughs> in on one little thing that yeah. you're doing and be yeah. like, so let's talk about the fidgeting. Yes. Like, exactly. I'm like, let me fidget. <laughs> let me fucking fidget. I love a fidget spinner. So I felt like it was, it was a lot more, it was better for me. I feel good. Good. That's interesting. I didn't really think about that, but it's so funny because I have thought about that when I'm in therapy, if I'm messing with my hands, if they like tune into that and they're like, Hmm, this girl or bouncing your leg. Yeah. 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 They're like, Hmm, this girl. Yeah. I don't want them to call me out. (laughs) Don't don't call us out. We just want to help. Please. We just want to help. (laughs) So changes in appetite or weight. It's another, okay. It's another significant changes in appetite or weight, including overeating or loss of appetite, which can lead to unattended weight gain or loss. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I remember being so depressed that like it, made me sick to eat. Like if I put something in my mouth, it Mm. just was so gross. And that was so weird because I love food. (laughs) I was like, what? I feel like for like, so this falls under depression. Yeah. This falls under depression. I feel like I've never really had either one of those. Okay. When depressed. That's good. Like if anything, it would probably be, I'm not going to eat because I don't want to because yeah. I don't feel like I deserve to eat or something. Right, right. But it was never really a big thing for me. Okay. That's interesting, yeah. It definitely affected me in that way. And I think not having, getting food and nutrients also messed with me a little bit. And I remember, like, losing a lot of weight. And But, again, it's just, like, the libido thing. I would rather be happy and fat than skinny and d- depressed the way I was depressed. Yeah, it's fair. And so you it's a compromise in yep. ways. It is a compromise. So sleep disturbances also fall under depression. Changes in sleep patterns, such as insomnia or hyposomnia, which is excessive sleeping. The first thing I took was Zoloft. Mm. And certain antidepressants, they, they like mess with your body in a weird way when you very first start taking them. And a lot of times you can get even more sad before you get happy again. But something with Zoloft, like it was making me so jittery and I would, at night I would be in my bed shaking. It was so weird. Something about, and so it, I don't know if it was the right 
in a depressant for me at the time. Mm -hmm. I guess what I'm trying to say is if you have a really bad reaction to an antidepressant, there are so many others out there yep. that would work for you, that could work for you. Mm -hmm. So I don't think like you should totally just throw the, away the idea. You have to put in the time. Like it does take almost six months to fully get in your system and help. And that's why like some people, it drives me crazy when they'll be like, yeah, I, I took it for a week, but I don't know. And they just stop. Yeah. Because yep. that's nothing. You don't get any benefit. You're not feeling anything from the medication. See, I've never been on a um, depression medication. I just have, like, the anxiety medication, which mm -hmm. I haven't been, like I said, haven't been taking for about three weeks now. Um, but I know my, my mom and my brother are both big, like, depression medication people. Yeah. And I've heard, like, my mom be on Zoloft. She, but I've never heard any bad or good thing. Like, she doesn't really talk about how she the medications yeah. affect her. Yeah. But I know she switches pretty often. So yeah. I, I don't know if she's still trying to find the right one or what. But That's interesting. But, yeah, you do have to just kind of shop around and see which one adjusts with your body the best way. Makes sense. Everybody's different. Everyone's and body chemistry is different. I also feel like almost every depression medication right now, though, also has a lot of side effects. Really? Like, can we make something that doesn't have side... Like, I don't get... I don't get it. Is it because they're, the, the medication is genuinely changing your, like, brain patterns? And so, like, it's going to affect your body in different ways? Or why does, why does every medication, no matter what it is, like, no, any medication has side effects? Well, I guess it's like a medication is a chemical, right? So if you put a chemical in your body, it's, something's going to happen. And, like, it can, and part of that chemical can help, but then part of it could also cause something else to go on. Yeah. It's just crazy because I've heard, you know, with Zoloft, it's like, you know, at the end of any commercial, could cause colon cancer and like, okay, I'd rather just be depressed and want to kill myself than get like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, I don't I, know. I had <laughs> a therapist tell me, and I love her, um, I used to see her, and when I first started seeing her, she said, you're probably going to have to be on an antidepressant the rest of your life. And hmm. that was, I was a little taken aback by that. But then, honestly, since then, I haven't really, it hasn't bothered me because I have felt so much better. Yeah. I can manage life better. I can get things done. And I am, like, genuinely all around happier. There's some places in my life where I'm not as happy. Things happen. I get yep. sad. I get my heart broken, things happen, that's life. If it helps me, me be a better me, then yeah. yeah. I'd rather be a better me and do all the things that I want to do mm -hmm. before I got depressed. Like, yeah. just be that person <laughs> that was me. Because when you become depressed, you lose yourself. And yep. I remember, uh, I remember after my depression, I was, when I was feeling better, at one point, like I was smiling or joking or something, and my mom was like, there's my girl. Ugh. And and there's that her. That hits. And I was just like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Like, that, I really haven't has, been myself. Yeah, that hasn't know? been me. That's, yeah. And it's sad. Yes. And you were, you were talking um, about how the depression hits at a certain time of day. Yeah. After that, around six or seven every evening is when mine would come in. Hmm. And if I'm going through a hard time in my life, which I kind of am now... <laughs> Um, Boom. around seven, six or seven, like it happens again where dusk sets in and night's about to begin mm -hmm. and everyone's together with their families Yep. yep. and like, mm -hmm. I'm alone. Mm -hmm. Yep. No, don't cry. Stop. <laughs> it's oh. <laughs> I love you so much. I love you. <laughs> but it's, it's hard. It's hard. It I know yep. people don't understand how hard it is. Some people do. Some people do. But yeah, and you know, you wish you could control it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There are times when I was like, when I was young, I would have never saw this, seen this coming. I would have yeah. never seen this coming. Yep. I was always so happy in high school, always so, you know, friendly and bubbly. And mm. I still think I am. I still have that personality. Yeah, absolutely. But um, you can be those things and still be so fucking depressed and mm -hmm. sad. Yep. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You know? Yep. I you agree. shouldn't ever think that someone has it all together. 
No, literally no one does. No matter what they... Don't we, come, we just yeah. talk... No matter what they have. Yeah. No matter how happy they seem, even couples on social media. I personally know so many couples that post, oh my God, <laughs> happy Valentine's Day. Oh or are constantly doing like, you know, things together or posting pictures of each other or doing photo shoots together. But then I'll talk to that person individually and they're like, I'm only with her because of the kid. Or, like, I hate my life. Like, yeah, it's, it's <sighs> fake. The, 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 Everything's the, fake. The image that they put... Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ash. I'm, like, using my wet hands to wipe off my, like, <laughs> wet face. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, sorry. That just, like, brought back some memories. It's okay. Yeah, it's true. Like, even you... Like, you said, when you see people post things... Yeah. It is, it's, and it was just Valentine's Day, like, a little while hard. ago. And and it's hard. It is hard, and it and it's also stupid. <laughs> Valentine's Sorry, Day. I think it's dumb when you Valentine's post it like Day that. is the worst, dumbest, most made up holiday ever. I hate it. I hate it to death. And I'm married with two kids. I've still never celebrated it. I've never gotten a single thing for Valentine's Day in my life. Yeah. Like I, I've never, ever, ever celebrated Valentine's Day ever. I I like pink and I like hearts. That's the only thing I like about Valentine's Day. <laughs> The rest of it can go to hell. <laughs> I agree. All okay. right, let's let's continue. Sorry, guys. I'm going <laughs> through a lot well, in my life right now, so <laughs> there might be some periods of crying off and on. Just get used to it. <laughs> get used to it. Get used to it. So going off more symptoms of depression, we have difficulty concentrating or making decisions. Or remembering things, which can impact work, school, or daily tasks. Yep, it does. Yep. It impacts all that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like remembering things is interesting. Yeah, because like traumatic things? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking because I swear there's so much I don't remember from my childhood and really? I swear I was like traumatized by things. You seem like the kind of person who had some childhood trauma going I'm, on. I, like even the, so the trauma I remember yeah. was traumatic. So I don't even want to know what I forgot. Well, I mean, <laughs> you were like you were like forcibly kissed by men who you didn't want to kiss. Multiple times. Multiple times. There's, there's like this one memory I I Remember, my dad had a friend and his son would come over to and play with me when we first moved to New Hampshire mm -hmm. from Massachusetts because I was born in Mass. And we lived there for five years. Oh, I didn't know New that. Hampshire. Yeah. Ma You're such a Mass hole. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he would bring his son over who was my age yeah. when we moved into our new house in New Hampshire. And we okay, have yeah. pictures of me with him. With the son. And I remember so blurrily, like super blurry in my memory. My dad's friend like picking me up upside down. And all I can remember is like seeing things from like upside down and it's like dizzying and that's all I can remember. And then I never saw him again. Like we never I really? I never saw him again. I never saw my dad's friend or that that kid ever again. That is freaky. I know. I want I want to I want to ask want my to, parents like, yeah. really bad, but I also don't. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh my God. That's so, do you, okay. Interesting. I don't know. Have you tried to remember more? I haven't. I haven't like sat and like tried to like, you know, meditate on yeah. more or thinking about more or anything. I haven't tried, but yeah, it's just interesting. But I feel like this is talking about like remembering things as in like you're having trouble, like difficulty concentrating. So you have a hard time remembering like what you talked about in the meeting earlier or okay, something. Yeah, I feel like yeah, that's exactly. what that's more talking okay, about. Okay, okay, yeah. Because for me, it was m basically just trouble concentrating and being able to do simple tasks. That's mm -hmm. I, Those things crippled me. Mm -hmm. Okay, also falling under depression, feeling worthlessness or guilt. That's a big one for me. Really? Yeah. That one hits hard? Oh, yeah. Yep. Why? <sighs> So this was something I just worked through in therapy. So Ooh, do tell. So um, I had a staff sergeant, and <sighs> take your time, Chelsea. We're here. So I had a staff sergeant, and um, he. Uh, was my instructor at uh, the schoolhouse uh, when I was in the Marine Corps. And uh, he ended up killing himself. And 
I very hard used to blame myself for that. Why? Why would you? So he, um, so he had a fiance, and he was sleeping with my corporal in my shop, who was I was pretty like pretty good friends with, and he also was trying to get with pretty much almost every girl who was in my shop. Um, my, you know, we called our shop work. Um, so he eventually moved his attention to me. Um, and you know, he was texting me one day talking about how, when he was my instructor in the schoolhouse, he wished we had done something, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I told my sergeant at the time when I was a corporal, actually I was a Lance corporal and he was a sergeant. So that's like a huge, like huge no. Oh really? Like you're, like you cannot like you're his like underling. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You cannot. You cannot. You can't cross that boundary. No, you don't. Um, you're not even really supposed to hang out with someone who's like a lower rank than you like that. Yeah. So I was telling my sergeant about that, who he also tried to get with at one point, and it was me, my corporal, and my sergeant, and we were all close girls. One, my corporal's the one that's sleeping with him. My sergeant tried to get like he tried to get with her, who was married. And then he tried to get with me, who was also married. Which, in the Marine Corps, you can get kicked out if you're married and sleeping with someone else. Oh, my God. So he clearly did not give, give a fuck at all no. about anyone's career path if right. they wanted to pursue career, you know, in the military. Yeah. So when I told my sergeant, she was like, okay, I'm getting out of the military, like, in a month. And I'm not going to leave you guys in this shop with this man. So she took it to my uh, captain and my gunnery sergeant, who then took it, you know, even higher. And it became this huge thing. He wasn't allowed in the shop. None of us could have contact with him. It became an investigation. So I was like the last straw kind of thing, you know? A lot of other girls ended up coming forward who were in the schoolhouse. Oh, my gosh. Um, and he was looking like he was going to get brig time, which is, like, military jail, which is worse than, like, regular jail. Really? Like, he was going to go to the brig and get kicked out. His whole career was going to be ruined. And everything he worked toward in life was just going to be over. Oh, my God. So he ended up shooting himself in his Jeep. Um, yeah. So... Oh my God! That you, was you know that's none of your fault though. Yes, that was the big guilt. You know he's he's okay. He's I'm gonna say he's selfish. He's not selfish <laughs> for killing himself. He's selfish for going around and ruining the careers of yeah. people. Oh, absolutely. And especially going after people who are married. Yeah. Yep. For his gratification. Because he killed himself, all the charges for anyone else was dropped. Like the corporal that was sleeping with him, who definitely should have got. Shit happened to her. Yeah. She, everything was dropped. She's now out of the military making 100% disability. So she's just living off the military right now. Damn. Like, she's making, like, $4,000 a month from the military. She doesn't even need to work. Damn. Like, so undeserved. Abs- like, 100% absolutely, yep. like, yeah. undeserved of her. Oh, my God. So that was I'm big so guilt. Sorry. That was big guilt. Yeah. I am so sorry you had to deal with that. <laughs> and I hope you know. I mean, it's, God, it's easier said than done. You know? It's oh, yeah. It's so yep. easier said than done. Yeah. All right. So along with the, um, the feelings of worthlessness or guilt up here, it says, often accompanied by negative self-talk, which is... We're pretty good at that. <laughs> yeah, oh, my God. Give me an award. Oh, uh, I know, right? Please give me an award. I'm so good at telling myself I'm a piece of shit when... <laughs> Something goes wrong in my life, or it yep. seems like someone doesn't like me, and I'm a piece of shit. See, I say I t- tell myself that a lot if I feel like I could have done better on something. I'm big, like, big on that. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's, I do see that, too, as, like, a thing that I've, yeah. It's yeah. so easy to talk negatively to yourself. So easy. It's too easy. That's why I listen to my, my, my song every morning. <laughs> I listen to Good Morning Gorgeous by uh, Mary J. Blige every morning. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. Is that your like get up and go that's song? My, that's my good morning to myself song. It's amazing to me how much music can affect you. Yes. Music is literally a fucking gift from the heavens. Yes. I've gotten through so many tough times in my life with music. Mm-hmm. Same. Oh my God. It is like healing. It is healing. It it's is. Absolutely. I feel like that goes big with like certain zodiac signs really depend really? on music. Like, yeah. 
Like, which ones have you, have you, do you know, like, have you? I know a lot of Pisces um, really depend on music a lot for, like, really? emotions and feelings. Uh, Aries a lot, too. Uh, mostly for, like, when they're angry. That's how they kind of get their, like, angry music in. Uh, Sagittarius, very much music bound. And okay. then Taurus. I'm a Taurus. Yeah. What can I say? Yep. <laughs> Sagittarius. Oh, that's so interesting. <laughs> Sagittarius. Yep. And then I, my friend... My friend Zach Davis just had a birthday yesterday, and he's a Pisces. So happy, happy birthday, birthday Zach! You Woo! crazy fish, you! Obviously, thoughts of suicide or death yeah. are a big... Uh, that's a big one. It's a big symptom of that's depression. A big symptom, yes. But it's funny that it's not under anxiety. So if you, wanna, if you, if you are having thoughts oh, of death or suicide, you're probably depressed. Yeah, definitely depressed. I, I feel like going over the symptoms of these two is good f- so that everyone, like I said, knows the difference and right. knows like what they might be going through. Right, exactly. Because people, they need help out there. Everyone needs help. We got to put the message out there that it's normal to want help and to get it. Yeah. Oh, to ask for it. I was hanging out with a friend and she invited me over uh, with some of her friends. And one of them is a nurse and she and I were talking and she said something so relatable and I was like, I love you. She was like, don't you just feel like when you're driving over a bridge, you just want to turn your car wheel and, and go over? Every time. And I was like, I feel that even on the road. Yep. Sometimes I'm just driving and I'm like, yes. what if I just flip this fucking car? Yep. I, I think about that all the time. And I think I, it's a I, common thought that people think about. I don't even think that comes with wanting to die. I no, I don't either. I, I think, think that's a normal human <laughs> yeah. thought. Like, or like... um. Oh, uh, Oh. Impulse. I think it's a normal impulse. Like sometimes I'm just like, if I just fucking rolled this car over, all of you assholes would be so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I'm so so. Yeah, that's a normal thought. So guys, you can it's have not- you can have really fucked up thoughts and not be depressed. Trust me, it you, happens. I always look at people walking like in front of me across the like the crosswalk. Yeah. And I'm like, I should just like. Ooh, my nose. <laughs> yeah. Start going just full speed. Who is it? Who is it? <gasps> what? OMG! Look at your fucking outfit. You're amazing. Oh my god! <laughs> what is this? Happy National Margarita Day. Oh my god! Happy National Margarita Day. Oh my gosh, Liz. Oh my god, these are so good. Are they good? Liz, you just missed the cry session. We both oh, cried both and told cried. stories. Happy oh, National oh, Margarita oh, Day. Margarita. <laughs> Hey! Adelie, <laughs> Adelie! Un poquito. What is it? It's a tiny, tiny Oh, no. oh my god, that's so that's cute. Handle it. <laughs> it's so cute. I can't handle that it. Is so I cute. love a cute little thing. You know, I think one of the most important things to remember if you do suffer from like anxiety or depression is to genuinely surround yourself with family and friends. I know yeah. so many people tried to cut themselves away from that, but I feel like that's genuinely one of the most important things someone can do. And I think the most, and, and above that I think is like the people around them. If you know someone who's struggling or you see the symptoms and the signs of someone withdrawing who could be going through depression, you need to reach out to them yeah. because they find it crippling to reach out. Yes. And you just be aware you know, things go on in people's minds. You have no idea. Mm-hmm. They could seem so happy, but at home be so depressed. I say again, I'm so happy that we're going over the yeah. symptoms of each thing because genuinely, if you see anyone that you care about having any of these symptoms or signs, like that's the warning sign Get that them you help. need. Get them help. Yep. Yeah. Talk so, to them. So please be aware. Please just talk to your friends, your family. And you can even just, like, share your mental health story with them. Like, why don't you just, you know, it might be good to just open up to your family and say, hey, can we talk about mental health? Like, it's not really a typical family conversation to have. But if your family is open enough to, like, listening and hearing, you know what, just go for it. Talk to them. Because, you know what, your parents might have gone through stuff similar to you, and you have no idea. Oh, absolutely. Because everybody's chemistry is passed down, you know, genetics, genetic-wise and whatnot. Like, I, I am, I know that my children probably won't think I went through half of the stuff that I've yeah. been through. Yeah. So genuinely, you never, you never know. You never do. So please, like, just look out for the signs 
and get people the help they need. So I have a question. Yes. Do I you, think I have an answer. <laughs> <laughs> you might. Do you think that if someone has depression, that that is technically a disability that they could write on like a resume where it says to write your disabilities? Okay. I've thought about this a lot because I've applied to a lot of jobs in my lifetime <laughs> and there is always a section on the application that, you know, this says, are you a veteran? Right. Ooh. And then it says, <laughs> like, are you disabled? And then it lists some disabilities or things that are considered disabilities. And on there is depression. Mm. And I never, even though I went through it and I still struggle with it, I never clicked it because I was afraid of the stereotype. I was yeah. afraid of what they would, they think I was unhinged and I couldn't get anything done or concentrate. I feel like no one, no one clicks it. I well, feel. Yeah, exactly. Or, or I felt like if I clicked it, they wouldn't consider me. Yeah. Yep. You feel like you're going to be discriminated like immediately. I'd, yeah, exactly. I yep. feel like I'd be judged. And sometimes I wish I, – I had a job that went really bad, and I sometimes wish I had checked disability on there, um, depression for my disability, because I wondered if they would handle it differently. Mm. I, I worked for this company. It was a women's lifestyle website, very popular. And I was on the video team. The bosses were a husband and wife married. Okay. It was awkward because obviously they would have fights in front of our team and we'd be like, okay, yep, please <laughs> just like take this home. And I worked my ass off for them. I worked so freaking hard. And within like five months, was it five? No, like within four months, they called me into a meeting and they were like, this isn't a good meeting. And I had no idea what they were going to say. And they were like, we have some this isn't a great meeting. We have some issues. Pe some people have come forward to us with some things that you've done. People are saying that you're being intimidating and you're not letting people into the studio when you shoot, which was so untrue. I've never said that to anyone. And I've always been like, let's shoot. Come on, guys. I, was, I honestly thought someone at the company was threatened by me, which you shouldn't be because I'm there to work for all y'all. Yeah. I'm into the team, team collaborative spirit, guys. <laughs> So then when I let like, go, I felt like I failed. Like yeah. I wasn't part of the girl team. Yeah. But they didn't see what I was going through. Yeah. And it was just so heartbreaking. I could not believe this woman did this to me. And it took years. Oh, my God. I self-doubted I self myself so much because of them. Yeah. Because I thought, well, they must be right. I must be a fucking loser who can't do anything, who can't work with people. And I am still, I've tried years to get over This is like 2017. I'm still not over this. And I've tried. I have tried so hard. There are times in my life when I'm like, yep, I forgive. But no, I don't. I'm sorry. But that just really fucked me up. And really destroyed my life. And I mean, dude, if they, if they knew, if they knew. So what do you feel like would have been different then if you had put depression on your resume? Okay, well, what I think would have changed was that the HR woman would have gone on my file and looked at that and seen that. And they would have handled it in a different way, maybe okay. like a softer way, a better way. And because all these other people had such great experiences and I didn't. I just felt like a fucking loser and I just couldn't get back on track. It took me a long time to yeah. get back on track. And here you are with a bunch of women. Yeah. So fuck you guys. I'm in a fucking hot tub on national margarita day. <laughs> <laughs> what has been like the biggest thing that's helped you cope? I think talking to friends like you guys and other people and realizing that I'm not alone. Yep. That other that's people huge. feel this way. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm so happy that having family and friends was the thing that worked for you. Yeah. For me, yeah. it was going to the gym. That was, that was, was that my therapy. That was my outlet. That was my lifestyle change that I made to get me through like my anxiety and depression. Which is good because it's actually like a known fact. Yes. That exercise. Yep. Oh, actually we have like a, we have, we have a list oh. of things. <laughs> oh, let's read them. Let's read them. Let's read through these. Here okay. you go. Okay, so right up. You, 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 you read. This is why we're insane. <laughs> All right, regular exercise. Engaging in regular physical activities such as walking, jogging, swimming, or yoga can help reduce symptoms 
of anxiety and depression by promoting the release of endorphins, improving sleep, and reducing stress. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I do agree with that, that like after, I always hate the process of like getting myself to go work out. Oh my God. But yeah. when it's done, I feel so good. Yes, it's always the initial getting yourself there that is Always the hardest yeah, part. Always. It is. it is. Going through the warm up and everything. Yes. I used to have weights in my hands sitting in front of the mirror. You know, you have the weight rack, you grab your weights, you're sitting down at your bench, you're looking in the mirror. I used to be sobbing at the gym with my headphones on, looking in the mirror while I'm doing shoulder presses, just sobbing. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. Actually, you know what's amazing is to like, cry while you work out. It's the best. It is the best. <laughs> oh my God. I've been going through some stuff in my life and like, like when I would, when I go to yoga at the end of it, I would just go to a corner and cry. That's well, everyone, so great. Because it's dark in the room. No one knows. Everything, everyone thinks I'm just sweating in the corner. I'm literally just like sitting there with my sweat rag, just like, <laughs> like silently crying. And then like, and then I'm like, I'm good. Like, I'm good. I think okay. it's something like emotional emotions kind of like come out when you're working hard and you're absolutely. Well, and yeah. also they like at the end of the class, the teacher always reads something really inspirational that makes, and that also can like make like unleash the tears. So stress management techniques. Okay. So such as deep breathing exercises, progressive muscle relaxation, meditation, or guided imagery can help reduce feelings of anxiety and promote relaxation. I have, yeah. God damn it, I've tried to me get meditation in my life so many times and I, I failed. <laughs> I have too. I feel like I had it for so long. Like oh. I could genuinely shut my entire brain off and just feel every tingle in my body. That's impressive because that's hard to do. I, I only could do that for like three months that I actually tried and then I like haven't done it since. Did, did you have to build up to that or were you like that? I like felt like just, I just had it. Damn. Some, but I haven't tried since. I just don't have time to sit and meditate anymore. I know and I hate that I say that too. I'm like, I don't have time. And they're like, it just takes five minutes. And I'm like, I don't <laughs> have five minutes. <laughs> like, it takes five minutes for me to shut off my brain. Yeah, you know what exactly. I mean? <laughs> exactly. So I, that's something that I would eventually like to build up to is like actually trying to meditate a real way and, yeah. and think about it and really try and dive into it and put all my effort into it if I'm going to do it. So one of the things we want to achieve with this episode is to reduce the stigma of mental health. Yes. Because a lot of people think if you're mentally ill, you're crazy. <laughs> and, and you are. And, and I you am. Are. Everyone's fucking crazy. Ah, yes. <laughs> Everyone's fucking crazy. <laughs> The more depressed you are, the better person you are. Everyone's crazy. <laughs> I've just accepted it. It's yourself. okay to seek the help that you need also. Yeah. This has happened a few times since my really bad depression where something will happen in my life that is really devastating and I'll start to feel the way I felt at that time when I was going down the tunnel. And it scares the shit out of me because I think, oh my God, this is the start of another cycle of a really depressive episode. But I think what I've realized is that for a while, the goal was to not be sad. But every human experiences sadness, whether you're depressed or not. Yep. So for me, it was telling myself, it's okay to be sad. This is normal. You know, you are not at the spot of sadness that you were when you were helpless and depressed. Yeah. When you've been at that point in your life when you've had such a depressive episode, the littlest thing can trigger it. Yep. And yep. you don't, you wish it didn't, you don't know why it does. You don't know. Yeah. It's just the tiniest thing can set you into that spiral. It, oh my gosh. I remember driving down to um, the beach with my mom and sister and I was in the back seat and I remember looking out the window and all of a sudden it hit me, like a wave of depression came back. And that whole week at the beach, I just was so anxiety ridden. Why was I sitting in the car looking out the window and all of a sudden I feel depressed? Like that makes no sense. Like, I think, why, like what the heck? I think a lot of the random depression has to genuinely do with thinking too much about why you're here and what your purpose is yeah, and what you've true. done in your life and what you could be doing in your life and what you want to be doing in your life. Right. Like what have I accomplished? What haven't I accomplished? Yep. Where am I going? Because honestly, like none of us know why we're here. Yeah. I don't think we'll ever know. Yeah. I don't think we will. <laughs> and that's like the mystery of being a human with emotions. Yeah. I'm okay with not knowing. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> 
So just reducing the stigma is like a big, big thing that we want to do. Yeah. Get the word out there. It's okay to be mentally ill. Okay, guys? <laughs> it's okay. And you know what? I honestly think our nation needs to catch up to that because there are things going on in the world. Like every time I hear of someone pushing someone in front of the subway, yeah. I know it's a person who could have benefited from help. Yeah. Because absolutely. they were mentally ill. Yep. They can't That's go so to the true. doctor. Yeah, yeah. They don't have health insurance. Yep. So of course they're going to let their mental illness get worse and worse yeah. because they don't have access to those things. If it gets to the point where they almost want to be arrested so they have jail. A roof over there. To, yeah, yeah. Just survive. And so it's just, I think it's so important to recognize mental health and to have, absolutely. to have the resources you need at your hands and have it be a lot easier and less expensive than it honestly realistically is i mean health insurance is a fucking scam in this country absolutely i mean don't even get me fucking started i cannot tell you as a person who's freelance and everything and like dude just to like afford to go to a therapist or a psychiatrist to get medicine that i need to function it shouldn't be that hard and expensive no seriously should and not it be. is and yep. it is sitting here trying to reduce that goddamn fucking stigma and just trying to truly promote your like self healing it's a good thing. Yes. And like, it, it doesn't come easy. It doesn't come easy. But it will come. But it will come and, and you're not alone. Just know this, guys. You're not alone. Not you at are all. not alone. Everyone has gone through some real bad shit and we are here for you. As we close today's episode, we want to thank you for joining us in this important conversation. We recognize the topics discussed can be challenging, and we appreciate your willingness to engage with such critical issues. If you or someone you know is struggling or needs support, remember, you're not alone. There are organizations dedicated to providing help. For those dealing with trauma, mental health challenges, and or suicide, the Samaritan's Helpline is available via phone and text by dialing 988 and offers confidential support 24-7. If you're affected by sexual assault, 1-800-656-4673 provides free confidential counseling and support. There's also multiple support phone numbers uh, for veterans in need as yes, well. Yes, exactly. If you're a veteran and you're in need, which we need to help our veterans uh, a lot more than we already do. They deal with so much trauma. They do. So there, there's endless support systems for so, veterans yes. as well. One, one click away. Your feedback and stories are vital to us, guys. If you wish to share your thoughts, experiences, or need someone to reach out to, please email us at sitsociety at gmail.com. That is C-I-T-S-S-O-C-I-E-T-Y at gmail.com. Your privacy and comfort are paramount, and we are here to listen. Remember, it's okay to seek help, and taking a step towards healing is a sign of strength. Join us next time as we continue to explore, understand, and support each other through these conversations. Take care of yourself and those around you. You never know what someone is going through, so be kind to others, and we love you. We love you. Love you. Love you.